the founders created a country that they knew was headed toward possible disaster because of the freedoms that they ensured in our Constitution and in the amendments which followed. And now, in a country where we have the great communicative ability afforded by the Internet, we also have its doomsday predecessor, fake news, which is misinforming people and giving them a false sense of knowledge. A TV star president made famous for the ills of our society, that is, in admiring cruelty. And this is what brought him to fame. His Darwinian capitalist attitude has now captured the imagination of the short attention span of the least educated of Americans and some who are educated in the middle class who were fed up with the other options. Many people, it is said, voted for Donald Trump who would have voted for Bernie Sanders had they not been incorrectly educated in social democracy. And now we lack a sensible social democracy. The European and Asian countries and some Latin American countries all have perfected what we started, the social democracy, leaning on the Enlightenment the French and British revolutions, we in America had our own revolution to set up a state that now affords us municipal expenses, national defense, education, and a decrepit health care system, all predicated on, along with the military, a social democratic system based on taxes. But the people who voted for Donald Trump were stupidly fooled into thinking that every other aspect of social democracy is okay, except among the idiot libertarians who belong on an island somewhere, but they don't think that it's okay for health care. There alone we see a perfect example of the ignorance of Americans today. And as a result, we have some of the highest infant mortality rates, teenage pregnancy rates, death in hospitals, our social democracy, the one that started the idea, is a disaster in contrast to the countries which followed suit and now have better democracies. Now we're becoming fascist. The people who used to lead the charge in being liberation-oriented are now those disinviting intellectuals on college campuses, attacking people on college campuses, begging for and demanding new pronouns and safe zones, trigger labels on textbooks. We are going backward. Now, this is for you, Michael Moore, who has been a champion of what's right. Your indignation on Stephen Colbert and Bill Maher was, as Sam Harris would say, the proper emotional and visceral response to the, to the cataclysms of our times. But what I fear is that your call to arms, so to speak, I know you're not a pro-gun person, you're wanting us to fight, as you say, while sentimentally correct, is going to lead to a fight. We saw what happened in Charlottesville when neo-Nazis faced off against neoliberals. What America lacks is a philosophy. We're knee-deep in rights, but our disparate religions our cultural diversity, the things that make a great nation state as it made Athens and Rome and Paris and London and New York are now going to tear us apart because we don't have a unifying philosophy such as the Asians have with their Confucianism, which is overdone in some places such as in South Korea, but which is a fantastic component in balance with religion and civic responsibility, such as in Japan. We can't achieve this if we only want to fight. And I understand that you're not saying just fight. But we can't fight for the good if we don't have a binding, communally orienting moral philosophy. And we don't have that in America. We have a country where children learn about science Monday to Friday if they're in the right schools, and then they learn about fantasy Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at synagogue, church, and mosque. We have built 
a dichotomous mind in America. It's reflected in our entertainment. Most Americans don't enjoy television about democracy. In some cases they do, such as in The West Wing or House of Cards. But there, again, what is most admired? Ravenous fascist individuals. Mostly we enjoy things like Spartacus or Game of Thrones. People are fantasizing about a dark age era, swords, orgy, execution. This should not be the fantasy of people who have inherited what came of Greek and Roman antiquity. Democratic egalitarian republic should cause citizens to be fantasizing about equality. Yet we hearken back to an age of barbarism and barbarism is winning. It is true that in places like South Korea and Japan, there is still the romantic story. We have Star Wars, they have Dragon Ball. They still fantasize about kings and queens, indeed about imperial eras of Europe. I decry this, but they have a unifying philosophy to compensate for it. In America, we have entitlement and elitism based on our lack of a philosophy and our plethora of rights. I have a right to bear arms. You have such a right to bear arms, apparently, that you can't read the Second Amendment and you're allowed to lie about what it is talking about. As an English teacher, I know what it's talking about. Unequivocally, it's about militias. And incidentally, it's about the citizen's right to own a gun. And most specifically, it's about regulation. But Americans today are not about details. They're about feelings. As Louis C.K. would say, my feelies. This is why the radical left has become fascist and the radical right has become incommunicable, incorrigible. And it's why we have a Congress and a Senate mostly composed of people who don't deserve the shoes they're standing in, in democracy, let alone the Senate or congressional floor. And it's why they stand behind a president who represents America. He's not an aberration. As George Carlin would say, he was made by America. You deserve Donald Trump. The solution is for people to embrace love and reason, intellectual honesty. The solution is to spurn identity politics and cognitive dissonance. Through this path, we may find a philosophy, and I recommend a philosophy, as Sam Harris would say, based on well-being. The religious philosophies of the Dark Ages have brought us where we are. Unreason, entitlement, chosen people. It's not working. Thank you.